Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, what we're going to do is check out the wget command. And wget is very cool because what it allows us to do is fetch files from the internet without even having to open up a web browser. And considering that most Linode instances won't even have a GUI because you don't need a GUI on a Linux server unless you want a GUI, but we're not going to require a GUI just to download files, wget more than has us covered when it comes to that. So let's go ahead and get started with today's video and I'll show you some examples of wget in action. So let's get started. So the first thing that we should do is make sure that wget is actually installed. And to do that, we'll type which and then wget just like this. And if you see output like this, that means that wget is actually installed. On my end, I'm actually running on Fedora. So if I didn't have wget installed, then what I could do is run sudo dnf install and then wget just like that. Or if I'm using a different package manager, then what I could do is use that package manager. And regardless of your distro, the package should be named as wget like you see right here. So go ahead and install that with your package manager if you don't already have wget on your system. Anyway, wget is installed and it's ready to go. So let's see some examples. One very popular use case for wget is to download an archive that contains an application that we want to install. Granted, not every application that you might want to run on your server is downloadable via wget, but it is a very popular use case. When you want to deploy an application on your server, the process usually starts by downloading the application that we intend on installing. Now, not every application that you might want to run on your server is downloadable this way, but many of them are. So what I'm going to do is show you the process of downloading WordPress. WordPress is a super popular platform for blogging and publishing web content, but we're not actually going to be setting up a WordPress server in this particular video, but perhaps that's something that I might cover in the future. So the first thing that we'll need is the URL. I don't know about you, but on my end, I don't personally have the download URL for WordPress memorized. So what we'll need to do is open up a browser. And then what we'll do is go to wordpress.org. And then we have a button right here that says get WordPress. So I'll click on that. And as an aside, this website can change at any time. And wget isn't specific to WordPress, it's just an example. So it shouldn't really matter. Anyway, after I clicked on the Get WordPress button, it brought me right here to the download page. So what I'll do is scroll down, and right here we have the download link. But instead of left clicking on this like I would normally do, what I'm going to do instead is right click on it. And then I'm going to click right here where it says Copy Link. Now depending on your browser, the verbiage here might be different, but it should be more or less the same. So I'll click on that right here, and let's go back to the terminal. And what we'll do is type wget, and then right here, I'll paste in the URL, and there it is. So if this works, what should happen is wget should actually fetch the zip file that's at this URL right here, which just so happens to be the installation files that are required for a WordPress installation. So I'll press Enter. And wow, look at that. It downloaded very quickly. We have the download file right here, and to prove that, you can see that we have the latest.zip file and if the name is any indication, that's the latest version of WordPress. But anyway, we were able to use wget to download something from the internet. And that completes our first example. So now we know the basic usage of wget. We were able to use it to download WordPress, the installation files for WordPress that are in this zip file. And that's the end of the first example. Now, just like most commands when it comes to Linux, there's other options that we could use with wget to customize it or actually tweak the behavior of wget. So let's see some additional examples. And the first one is going to be the dash capital O option. So if I recall the previous command, which is right here, what I could do is add the dash capital O option right here. And what this allows me to do is actually change the name of the downloaded file. So if I wanted to call it wp.zip, for example, I could certainly do that because the dash O option allows us to set a custom name for the file. So I'll press enter. And we can see both of the files right here, and they are the exact same size. We can see the file size right here for the first one that we've downloaded. And then you'll notice for wp.zip, it's the same file size because, well, they are the same file. So as you can see, when we use the dash capital O option, that allows us to set the name. 
So I was able to override the name, the default name of latest.zip at the server side, and then name it wp.zip here on the local server. Now to be fair, I could just accept the default name when I go to use wget and then rename it later, but that is legitimately another step. So while I could simply rename the file manually, it might make sense for you, especially if you're scripting this, to have the name as something specific all in one command rather than waste a line in a script file or something like that. We could set the name like you see here. So for the next example, what I'm going to do is show you how you can actually choose the location for the downloaded file as well. By default, wget will download whatever it is you're downloading to your current working directory. But if you want to redirect that file somewhere else, you can absolutely do that. And that's exactly what I'll show you right now. So in order to set a custom path for the downloaded file, what we'll do is we'll use the dash capital P option, like you see right here. And then right after that, we'll give it a custom path. I'll just save mine in my downloads directory here. But on your server, you might have a download directory somewhere else. Just go ahead and update your path accordingly if you're following along with me. But we have the dash capital P option. We have a path. And then we need to tell wget what in particular we want to download, which again is going to be WordPress because, well, why not use that as an example again? I already have the URL, so it's easy to do. And that was at wordpress.org and then latest.zip. So I'll press enter. And then we'll list the storage. And as you can see right there in my downloads directory, we have the latest.zip file that we grabbed from the WordPress server. And it's ready to go right there in my downloads directory. Now, so far, the WordPress example, the latest.zip file, that's a very small file and it downloads extremely quickly. But what if you're downloading something that's quite large and for some reason you lose network connection? If you have a slower connection, that might be a little painful to start all over again, especially if the file is extremely large. So what I'm going to do right now is actually use a different file as an example. And this is actually another reason why wget is often used We'll sometimes use it to download ISO files for Linux distributions. Off camera, I went ahead and grabbed the URL for the ISO file for Alma Linux from one of the mirrors on the official website. So I'll paste that right here. Now this file is going to be on the larger side, so it's going to take a bit of time for this to download. Now my internet connection is actually reasonably fast, so it might not take all that long, but it's definitely going to take longer than that WordPress file. So what I'll do is open up a new tab, and then in the original tab, I'll start the download. And then once the download starts, I'll close the tab to simulate an interrupted download. And then we'll see how we can go ahead and resume the download. So as you can see, it's downloading right now. This is the official ISO file for Alma Linux. And as an aside, I have a video that I've uploaded recently that shows you the installation process for Alma Linux. So definitely check that one out if you're interested. But anyway, back to wget. I have the download going right here, and let's go ahead and cancel it. I'm just going to close this tab. And it's gone. So the download was interrupted, and I would rather not start over, so what can we do? Well, here's the command right here that we used to at least attempt the download earlier. So what I'm going to do is add the dash C option, and if this is actually successful, then what that should allow us to do is resume the download right where we left off. And I didn't even try this ahead of time off camera or anything like that, so I don't even know if the Alma Linux ISO file, if that web server that's serving this file, actually supports the ability to resume. So I'm going to find out, along with you guys, whether or not this works. Anyway, I'll press enter. Let's see. And it looks like it's working. Wow. So I was able to continue the download without starting from scratch, and that's awesome. Now, I already have all my Linux downloaded, so I'm not going to wait for this to finish. I'm going to cancel it this time, and I won't resume it. We see that it was actually working, so I think that's good enough for now. And then we can move on to the next example. So next, what I'll show you how to do is actually use an input file with wget. So for example, I'll use nano. You could use whatever text editor you would like. And what we'll do is we'll create a text file. I'll just call mine fetchlist.txt. And I'll paste the ISO download link right here as the first item in this file. So there we have the ISO file, the download link for the ISO file that I grabbed from the Alma Linux website. 
And in addition to that, I'll add another URL right here. Let's add wordpress.org latest.zip. And then I'll add another one as well. And actually, we should add the S right there for that one. And I have two URLs right there that I want to grab. Basically, the two files that we've been working with so far. So I'll save the file and exit out. And we have the fetch list right there. So what I'm going to do is type wget and then dash i for input file. And I'll give it the text file that we've just created. And if this works, what it should do is actually download everything that was contained inside that file. And so far, it's actually downloading the CentOS ISO file, as you can see right here. So I won't cancel it this time because I actually do want to see this continue. I want to see it continue and download the WordPress file as well, which should be downloaded right after this one right here is finished. And that'll confirm that our fetch list is actually working. And check that out. It actually downloaded the WordPress installation file right after it finished with the Alma Linux file. Since we had two URLs in the text file that I used for this example, that makes sense. So now, as you can see, you can actually define URLs right in a text file, and then you can point that text file right to wget, and wget will take care of downloading those files right to your server. As you just saw, wget is awesome. There's just something about being able to download files from the internet without a browser that's just so cool. Now, granted, we did use a browser to grab the download URL, which we will need in order to know what to download. But beyond that, wget doesn't really need a browser. We just simply plug in a URL and then we download a file. So hopefully the examples that I gave you guys in today's video helped you with learning the wget command. And sure, it's one of the simpler commands that you can learn, but it's very effective. If this video has helped you out, please click that like button. And once you've done that, also click that subscribe button because there's additional videos that I'm creating for Linode. And actually, as soon as I'm done with this particular video, I'm going to record the next. So you'll definitely want to see that next video as soon as it's uploaded. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you again very soon.